वेलकम होंगी कर Can you hear me okay? Omikar welcome. Thank you sir. Good evening this to you. Uh, this is DDG sir. Yes yes of course. <laughs> yeah. How are you? I am good sir. How are you? I am fine. I am fine. So let us for, uh, wait for 2 3 minutes. Students sure. are joining. Absolutely. Then formally we will start the program. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Dilip sir, are you are you here? Yes. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So we will we'll just start the program sharp at eight, right? So we have two minutes time. Anupam? Yes, sir. How, how many students have joined till yet? Sir, around uh, 40, 41. 40, 41. Total so participant, can... yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. So the weather there, yeah, I heard mm. it cold either. So uh, Arizona is six, but uh, there is another uh, city called. Yeah. Hmm. The background of organizing this kind of program, our institution stakeholders. Okay. Uh, the basic uh, way of doing this is through uh, several, uh, then Twitter and uh, you know Instagram. Right. So what we are doing is we are propagating all our all of our events across all departments to the outside world, and through this particular program, we are trying to connect our ex students, that is alumni, with the existing students. Okay. We have a plan to organize many programs, like uh, we will share some success stories of each and every department, you know, and uh, in the new normal. We thought this is the best way of connecting to the external world, actually. Sure. So uh, we have been organized it for all the departments. Today, uh, this is the turn for Department of Electrical Engineering. So I formally request Dr. Dilip De, HOD Electrical Engineering, to take over. OK. Yeah. Very good after morning. Uh, good morning for the Ongikar because now <laughs> it is the morning. But, yeah. Uh, rest of that for the um, uh, good evening. Now I am introducing uh, Ongikar. Actually, he was the uh, our departmental student. Ongikar actually graduated uh, from Holden Institute of Technology uh, from Electrical Engineering Department in the year of 2008. After then, Ongikar completed. MS, Masters from Lamar University, which is earlier known as the State University of Texas. 
in the subject of the electrical and electronics engineering with a specialization in digital signal processing and pattern recognition. Ongikar researched and did his thesis on the statistical approach to binary and multi-class pattern to divisive brain computer interface. That's basically BCI application. Also, he wrote a book on, the, on his thesis and research, which is available in Amazon bookstore. But now, is um, then he shifted uh, his gear a little bit on expertise uh, into field of the pattern like Holland, uh, America cruises lines, and oil fragro. Currently, he is working uh, for the discount R, US largest tire retail company, as a solution architect for the various data science and data modeling application. Uh, Ongikar actually. Uh, the general secretary of the HIT's first ever get fest, which is known as the Projecti, as in 2007. He, along with the other three HITians, represented uh, it in IIT Kitties 2007 in several interest uh, quiz competition and brainstorming events. Ongikar also fan of a football. Uh, and he has also taste for music, poetry, fine arts, and literature. But now he is in Arjuna, already we discussed but with the, our DD, sir, in uh, Arjuna in USA, and never gets bored looking the vastness of the Grand Canyon. Thank you for the student. Okay, Ongikar, you can start. Thank you, Dilip, sir. Uh, you guys hear me okay, right? So there was lots of <laughs> verses by DD sir and Dilip the sir. <laughs> Thank you for that. It just feels like yesterday uh, when I was just in your place, was being educated by these great teachers. So thank you again. And uh, well, uh, good evening uh, to everybody and good morning to me. It's a very fine morning in Arizona right now. Uh, not yet that sunny, but sun will come out. So yeah, we have silver lining after every dark tunnel. So Arizona is just like that. It was cloudy yesterday. And again, it is very much sunny today. Okay, so uh, I heard that uh, agenda, I heard that uh, motion of this uh, discussion, uh, I pretend and uh, we will have a question and answer session after uh, in the end, so that you can ask me any types of question, I will try screen. And where is that share option? Okay, I found that. Uh, play from start. Let's see. Okay. Why it is going that? Hmm. Okay. It will not be in a time share mode. A window. I think it is still loading. It is visible, right? Yeah, it is visible. Okay. You can make it full screen also. Slide sorter. This is basically going to the slideshow and basically capturing my entire screen. So I cannot see you guys. Uh, fit slide to current window. Okay. Any, anyways, that, that will work. So Yeah, that will work. Somebody raise his hand. Okay. Anyways, let's start. So... I heard that you guys are mostly from uh, second year, third year, and fourth year, right? So uh, some of them are basically learning, being educated. Some of them are preparing for their uh, next endeavor, right? Either it is MS, either it is MTech, or maybe any kind of research activity, or job, obviously, interviews and all those stuff. When I was at your position, uh, uh, like many other students, there are mostly three types of uh, mindsets that I normally uh, have uh, observed. Either uh, we are super confused, we do not know what to do, and uh, we have read a lot, like almost uh, 50 uh, subjects in like eight semesters, right? And okay, congratulations, <laughs> you are almost scoring your half century. Uh, how much of them you can really memorize after you are actually passed out 
that percentage is very little. So then that confusion comes that, okay, I mean, what did I really do in uh, last four years? I mean, my whole bachelor's journey. Okay, I read a lot how much I can really implement. So that confusion comes. That's not a bad thing. That is very, uh, I mean, very much possible thing, basically. So don't get confused. But I mean, confusion is one state of mind. Another is basically you are worried. Okay, you are worried about lots of things. You are since you care. You care about your future. You care about your particular examination. You care about your particular interview. So in that cases, yes, try harder. And uh, basically, scaredness is another state of mind. We have to overcome that. But th that is okay. That is completely fine. Or third state is basically you are frustrated. You have tried a lot. You have, uh, I mean, uh, put so much effort in your study, in your extracurriculum activities. But okay, I mean, you are not getting uh, expected results. So bachelor journey is basically like that. So bachelor of engineering in any field, mostly electrical engineering is obviously one of the prime examples. So it, it is like that. So it, it, you were uh, not like out of the board. You were not an alien. So it, it, everybody faced that. And if you are facing that right now, it is okay, completely fine. But then there is a silver lining, just like electrical engineers, right? And uh, you will be passed out as a BTEC in electrical engineering. So keep calm, keep relaxing. And now you can say, oh, really? I mean, how that can be even possible? Because just like I said that, okay, we have uh, learned like 50 or so many subjects. Some of them, I feel that they're totally irrelevant. Oh, really, how I can be super successful in my life? Or how can I uh, get my track done or tr track down towards a successful future? So there comes this thing. So... Electrical engineering is, uh, you all know, I mean, I'm just reminiscing a few uh, things in here because in our whole BTEC journey, somehow uh, we keep on forgetting that. So electrical engineering is not a very small domain, right? We'll always, engineering is, of course, one of the prime pillar of uh, which has been diverted from electrical engineering. Instrumentation is, of course, and I can go for that. And there is a vast section of computer engineering. And I think you guys all can correlate that uh, relevance, potatoes or vegetables. They can even think that, okay, can I sell my potatoes through Amazon? Okay, fair enough. I mean, you can definitely, but we need a platform. So electrical engineering also imbibes in there. So it is not only like electricity and machine learning and machine design. Yes, those are the main pillars. Those are the main logical interventions. So, from where, where exactly we belong, but it has been diverted in so many other areas too. So computer science is one of them. And from computer science, again, there are so many other branches, other sub-branches rather, I would say. So software engineering is one of that, where coding and algorithm comes into play. Network engineering is another thing. And obviously hardware engineering, because you will need your cheap designing knowledge, MEMS and all those stuff in there. So you cannot really build an hardware without those knowledge. So yeah, th those are the uh, fields, basically, we have uh, been diverted from uh, the core electrical engineering part. Another way to look, another broader classification is just like that. So power and energy electronics, micro and nano electronics, of course, signal processing, image processing, What th that, that is a huge part too. Automation and control, robotics, mechatronics, that is another thing. Telecommunication is another part. So you, you already know this part. I'm not going into that. Uh, deeper details. Another way is basically to look into that. So here we will discuss a few more things over there. So up to this slide, whatever uh, we were discussing, it's basically a broader classification. But what is this slide now? Because probably uh, this will be a little important wherever you are trying to go next. So some of you, I assume that you were trying to go to the research field right so mtech or ms or uh, whatever so in your uh, up, up to 12th standard whenever i mean prior to joining your btech career right so uh, we were learning all this maths and sciences well all, all those bas basic subjects so in some cases we uh, got that uh, notion that okay i mean these formulas, well, where they're really being applied to. I mean, there are lots of differential calculus, lots of integral calculus, et cetera, et cetera, probability, set theory, blah, blah, blah. So where they really fit. And uh, 
in my whole BTEC journey, I probably have just one subject uh, that is the engineering maths. But if you see mathematics and all those concepts, those basic concepts are basically everywhere. Knowingly or unknowingly, you have used them in a perspective of much theoretical nature. So it is kind of a little bit of formula and a little bit of uh, theory. So this machine works like that, blah, blah, blah. But behind the scene everywhere, there is a mathematical calculation. Without that, the world doesn't rotate even. So this first pillar obviously combines with this engineering core and uh, obviously electrical engineering core. And th this has uh, now this many pillars. So signals and systems needs matrix and determinants, uh, fields and materials needs integral calculus, blah, blah, blah. So they are basically, those dots are being connected. Now, where they are really going, I have another slide to show you, but where they're really going. So there comes the, those diversions. So one field crisscrossed with uh, basically another uh, field or block from this pillar, basically uh, diverts to maybe communication or maybe electronics or maybe nanotechnology. So pillar one and pillar two combinedly defines pillar three. So those specialized studies would never come if you are not familiar with this and this, pillar one and pillar two. So in other words, whatever you have done so far, uh, that is very important. And uh, basically from the baseline standpoint, if you are having your basic clear, then yes, it will help because that is how it, it has been evolved. That is how it, it is being evolving. So that's basically uh, the main motto, right? Now, here is the thing that uh, we were uh, saying that how they're basically connecting and how they are basically diverting. So let's say we have power engineering and electromagnetics. That gives birth to EVM. What is EVM? EVM is basically electric vehicle motion. Everybody is going, going and so many other companies which are basically uh, building those cars. Tesla is almost everywhere in US. Okay, not for only the auto driving, but it, it has and probably more burning topic in next five or 10 years because everybody is leaning towards that. Quantum physics, MEMS, DSP, it basically gives birth to Sycamore. Does anybody know what is Sycamore? I do not see any hand raised. Okay, so Sycamore is basically the quantum business scale in a commercial scale, so that we may get some quantum computers cheap and uh, I mean not not cheap, but very much efficient, but yeah, cost worthy, and uh, maybe in the next five years. So who can say? I mean, you can fit yourself in there too. Well, quantum physics is not a very easy part to do, but if you learn that, that is a that, that has come from the very basics physics, but again, MEMS and DSP combinedly is giving birth to that. So Google is also there. They are hiring electrical and instrumentation engineering. So that's a very new field which is emerging right now. DSP and power system is different stakes. You probably know that, like say for example, missile technologies, right? Uh, I don't know how much uh, that is, I mean, an easy going job in India. In here, that is a, I mean, very, Burning topic too for the DSP engineers. So that combines uh, makes that field set theory calculus probability that all combinedly makes data science. Now data science and pattern recognition makes your neural networks air and VR. Probably you have all played Pokemon. How many of you actually learned the basic science of behind that? Probably none of us. I even didn't know that at the very beginning, but yeah gradually world is emerging there too. So augmented reality or virtual reality, it's basically based on that. So your own machine, that machine you have trained with your own probability. So just like that. Biosensors and neural networks, it is basically through that, right? So pattern recognition and uh, all those stuff. So that's a pretty interesting and burning topic too. Uh, it, it, it is basically everywhere in military field, in uh, medical field, everywhere. So Amputated legs, okay, I will give you a prosthetic leg and that will be trained by your own uh, brain. So you can train that, then you can test that, you can use that in reality. Okay, done, done deal. So nothing new, right? So we are just uh, get, getting, uh, have, having a replacement of your own leg with that with a prosthetic leg. So, okay, fair enough. So there is where our world is going. and. If you see, I think now already covered, you are already covering, or you will be covered when you will be basically passed out after four years. 
So second year students, they were basically just jumping into more paths to go. Fourth year students, you are almost there, right? And of course, you have a great future ahead of you. But till now, yeah, you can correlate it if you were in the last semester. So probably never realized that these many sectors I can go, but I mean, can I fit myself in this uh, so many industries? And so why can't you? I mean, definitely their own tricks, right? Similarly, it has its own tricks too. Not very hard, not uh, like that, that you cannot achieve that, but you probably uh, maybe have some little more understanding if we just go ahead through those. So there I will, uh, I will have the, so what to do, how to proceed, right? So first thing, what I think is basically clear up your basics. So you will probably remember this particular slide, what we were dis discussing, <clears throat> sorry. So one basic part of math and science you have already covered in your 12th standard engineering core you are studying right now. So if those basics remember all those details out of a subject because you are basically studying so many things and yeah i mean bachelor study is like that not only in us but uh, not only in india but also in us and basically everywhere in this world you are given with a boatload of information and uh, now it's your choice it, 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 it is just like that the game is just like that so okay yeah I, i'm say for example i'm google so it is just like that so so many subjects some of them probably you do not have interest either but you have to learn you because you have a stream, then clear up your basics. So say, for example, you are very much interested in signal processing, right? So you will probably have like DSP, advanced DSP. Uh, I don't, don't know by I mean, which subjects are uh, taught right now, but maybe say, for example, image processing or so, something like that. A little bit MATLAB coding and all, all, all those stuff, right? So there are some basics that you will basically carry with you if you were in that journey, in the DSP journey throughout your life. So those never die, right? Say for example, FFT, DFT, those are the very, very, very basic thing. Even whoever is designing a missile right now, they have to use that too. So that is not, not a waste, don't think about that. So rather try to clear up your basics. So that is just an example and we will, be having this type of examples in all the subjects, whatever we learn. So that is one thing. Second thing is related or connected. So you may think that, okay, I mean, uh, I do have a modern technology and modern algorithm to solve a particular problem. Why can't I just go there, uh, derive that problem and uh, try to solve that, learn that particular algorithm and boom, okay, I'm done. Yeah, you can do that. Well, that is not a very good way to do. There is a reason for that. Everything has a history. So say, for example, as I just said that DFT and FFT, those algorithms are even being used in missile technologies even today. Learn that evolution to learn how it has been emerged to that particular state, we need to clear up that history because probably 20 years back, some other algorithm, not 100%. So probably, uh, context of any particular type of problem the solution worked only up to say for example 60 percent now uh, there are other aspects too so then scientists researched and evolved to another somebody has any question okay so that they probably we still have the 20 percent gap so that way it has been evolved so now we are standing at such a point, it is not even giving 100% efficiency, but it is giving, say, for example, 95%. Do you have any, any, anything to ask? Okay. So this way, basically, the, there is a history, the newest one, but there will be a gap because that newest one is not the end. The world is not stopping there. It will be evolving. So whatever is evolving, whatever you will be researching for the next day, you need to know the history that from where it emerged and where you are trying to emerge next, because this is your current now. And based on that, you will be going to your future. So that is basically the third part. And uh, to achieve that, you have to read between lines. So 
how that is correlated because as we were any subject some of the subjects are basically very much mathematics oriented they do not have even uh, some uh, qualitative explanation but most of the subjects have because say for example i know a machine runs like that i know a machine is basically uh, inputting this this the volt and it is basically generating blah 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 so something like that but behind the scene there is a mathematical formula right so whenever that quantity sorry qualitative statement is basically stated read between lines means that you need to find what is the mathematical explanation behind that and that way basically you will understand it more if you only think just like a robot that okay this is the formula right so whenever i will see this kind of problem i will do that but probably that formula is kind of a uh, i mean situational uh, from situational standpoint that only works on a certain criteria now you didn't read your question carefully and i asked for another criteria where that equation doesn't fit at all right so there you basically lied to yourself because you were just thinking about just like a robot and you had that quantitative approach in your mind that okay i mean in this way you can solve a problem did you really read, read that question because that question is demanding something something else totally different thing so then you have a gap you are having a gap in that qualitative explanation and that quantitative explanation so read between lines is basically going there blood will build uh, bleed but follow your heart okay so the uh, and so this two again are basically correlated and in your goal know the tight right and define success define success why because you need to define your own success story don't look at others yes learn from others but don't copy others success because everybody is a separate individual right so what success is actually meant to you it may be not the same for me it not maybe not the same for you another friend so what you think that your success story will be for next 5 years for next 10 years or maybe next 30 years that is where you need to aim your goal so if you really think say for example uh, you want to stay in academia which is a very fantastic thing say so, okay i'll be uh, performing teaching just like my mentors just like my teachers i have learned a lot from them i want to do research and teaching okay so if that is your goal then go for it i mean no harm in there that okay i, I, I cannot go oh, how what will my uh, what will be said my by one of my friend that okay he got a job but uh, he is saying that oh you are in a research line no oh, that is boring no nothing is boring basically so if you have that in your mind go for that i mean no issue but set your goal know your goal very clearly don't be confused after 5 years that oh i opted for research now i am going uh, to, towards industry i uh, learned nothing and i am confused again so this step i have seen people this also comes so try to avoid that and <clears throat> if you are going through the uh, correct direction probably this confusion will, will never come so that is one thing blood will bleed yeah so i mean e e even probably in your uh, current career career means in your academic career in uh, btech uh, you have not uh, got outstanding in all the subjects right so that is completely fine because uh, i mean if you are getting o in all the subjects that is okay you are a superhuman i, I was not like that and many of us are not like that basically so say for example we have six subjects i have learned only two subjects but those two subjects i have learned by my heart and i have cleared my basics i had read up between lines so anything basic you basically ask from those two subjects i can answer i cared about the others too but hard to tell hard to grab hard to experience and very hard in examination hall and one three hours exam doesn't really calculate your iq doesn't really calculate your intelligence so it's completely fine those are the things be very clear to yourself learn from others but don't copy others that okay my friend is going there i could go there yeah probably you could but you are not right because you are basically focused in some other stream so go ahead with your stream 
resources out there now and when i say resources those are more and more leaning towards the online resources when i was uh, very much handy right uh, in our cases there were a few but uh, i i think it, it, it is much more vast and uh, tangible basically in, in your case there are lots of resources out there so you do browse internet good there are lots of lots lots and lots of lectures uh, papers uh, even company driven modules wh whatever you need they are all out there uh, in, uh, in in the in the internet say for example you will find uh, fantastic lectures of mit and stanford even texas state the university of mine from where i graduated they have almost all the course materials available in there there are lots of online courses in there so apart from your regular study whatever you are being taught and your teacher you cannot appear for your beta examination but let's say you have a particular interest in a particular point for a particular subject and that was not that much covered okay do you stop you can go approach both ways you can ask your teacher definitely or there are lots of lectures blah 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 all, all those stuff you want to learn a programming language go ahead with that there are free courses in youtube nowadays but you need to stick together well, well just stick to that basically so that is the, this point basically and befriend exams and don't be scared don't take it uh, like that that okay if you fail in one exam that is the end of the story not really that but befriend i mean uh, just go ahead be uh, relaxed and whatever you have learned just try to perform in that examination and it it will go on its own i mean in your in my experience whenever i at least uh, not uh, now but it was true like one decade back right so whenever uh, i was applying for my masters i got uh, the admission from nine universities out of 10 whatever i uh, applied for and I uh, studied a little harder for that subject, probably I would get another O. So it will uh, be just incrementing my uh, grade point average by fantastic. I mean, no, no issue. So it really matter because you will probably see the examinations you are actually going to appear for, for your master study, at least if you were coming abroad, if you are coming to you, for example, GRE, for example, TOEFL, they really, do not matter because it, it is a totally different mindset. It's totally different set of examinations. But yes, I mean, your grade point still matters, but not in that fashion. Well, yes. Students, you, you must uh, mute while listening the lecture. I think somebody is unmuted. Yeah. Okay. Carry on. Yeah. So yeah, just like I was saying, so that that really matters, but I mean, not in that way that, okay, if you are just point two less, then you cannot uh, get any admission out, befriend the exams and go with your own pace. So it, it will be okay, eventually it will be okay. So a few words took down that, oh, I, I never did good in that exam or in a particular subject that I really uh, thought that because you probably understand the subject much better than anybody else in your class. But one exam you fail, that is chin up, discuss, discuss more, learn, and then move forward. Interested in research, fair enough, go for it. So we already discussed that in lots of uh, other companies, right? So that's a totally different domain. And if you are not meant for that, you, if, if you are not very comfortable in that practice, don't go for that. If you are comfortable in academia, go for it. I mean nothing no opportunity is better than teaching basically so it's fabulous it, it, it is completely fine learn from others but don't repeat other mistakes yeah you can or learn from it so you have heard uh, probably one of your senior that okay this kind of subject if you are uh, i mean studying this way then probably this uh, question will come and you will fail so don't repeat that don't th then don't go for uh, that way don't repeat uh, the same mistake learn from that and then move on so and we often uh, call a thing right that history repeats itself yes that's a true statement history repeats but not at the same point from wherever you have heard uh, 
the failure story from others, you may fail. I'm not saying that you uh, basically escaped that particular strategy and you must be successful. No, you may, that will be your own learning from yourself that, okay, I failed there. Now I will not repeat my mistake again. So learning from mistake is, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, fair enough. That's uh, about how much <clears throat> on campusing is going on. If you are just uh, passed out after BTEC and trying for a job, the outer market, it's very tough and it is getting tougher and tougher day by day. So yes, that is a lion game. You have to be a lion in, in there. In he or she basically uh, grabbed all those stuff. I cannot do anything. I'm good for nothing. No, of course not. You are good for something. Always, everybody is good for something. So it, it, there is no heartbroken feeling like that. Okay, I've been. I, I cannot, could not crack one interview, and now I am doomed. No, not exactly like that. You have to be a lion because it, 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 it's a lion game. Everybody is try to just hunt there. <laughs> Okay, okay, continue. No, you are muted. You are muted, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I just un un unmuted myself. Yeah, so yeah, mm -hmm. there are just two more points, and then I will not <laughs> make you that much bored because we have a question and answer session. The guru said that the rule of three P's, not much that is true for every interview. So you have to plan for a particular thing. So where you are trying to be. Uh, try, try, trying to be appearing. So obviously you are not going and yes, related interview with, with your uh, massive knowledge in electrical machines and not the vice versa. So whatever is relevant, you need to plan for that. You need to prepare for that definitely and prepare for that means you have to prepare in that particular company way. So you need to feel that rhythm that what that company can ask you. Obviously, there are lots of resources again, and there are lots of interview experience by different people, which are already in Glassdoor or in uh, other uh, things in the Google. So go for that and try to learn, basically. Go through those and you will see that what types of questions you asked. And you will basically derive a pattern that, okay, if I'm basically competing for that particular type of spot, that, okay, I'm a software engineer or data science engineer, right? So if data science engineer, then these are the more focusing things, the more focused sectors that they can ask questions about. So refurbish, but basically prepare yourself like that because you have to have a strategy to crack and then perform. And not saying that, okay, I mean, but one good thing. So when he was interviewing Google in the final round, he was only asked one question. So that question was basically that, uh, how do you overcome your failures? It was a pretty simple question, right? And uh, he was competing and uh, he answered like almost one and a half hour <laughs> onto that particular topic. That is what we actually need because success stories are success stories. If you were basically given a favorable pitch and a fantastic bat, you can hit basically, if that pitch is really hard, if your opponent is really hard, there is your game. So how much efficient you are in there. So it doesn't really matter how much successful you are. It, uh, uh, it means not, not you, I mean, wh whomever you are following, but it matters more. <laughs> Who is that guy? Jack Sulka. 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 Jack I have already identified, so I just ah. uh, take the necessary measure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. It happens. So, it happens. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. So, whatever I was saying. So, 
he basically depends on uh, that particular topic that where are his limits? How did he particularly overcome that? He is successful already, right? Because in a favorable favorable condition, everybody can can be successful. But once a massive massacre happens in some company, let's say, I, I mean, I don't know how, how much. Um, I mean, latest news you have on the industry. In the software industry, there was a blast. Basically, there was a online hacking. It, it in the logging algorithm, just like one month back. I used to call Log4j. We are still using that. It's basically a Java com component. And for almost 20 years, it happens uh, to be there without any uh, intervention. But then hackers hacked that. And uh, there was massacre in almost all the companies because data was being compromised. So those kind of challenges, when you are basically presented with that particular problem, then how, what did you do to overcome that challenge? That basically defines yourself. Because that is the hard pitch you are batting on. That is the snowy field you are playing soccer on, and there will be skidding. So it is not like that, that, oh, you are making a just over volley and just scoring a goal. It's not that easy. So yes, failures should be more to admit rather than success stories. So learn from others' failures again, and uh, try to learn how they overcome that. So yeah, d definitely it will help. And the last point, not the least, there are many more. I probably covered a few, and there are lots of other inspirational things. So don't lick your wounds, but celebrate them. So it's a lion's game. And if I lick my wound, that, OK, I am injured, right? I have been wounded. Somebody asked me a very twisted question in an interview. I really could not uh, help myself to answer that in that particular moment. OK, fair enough. So I need to celebrate them because that is my failure and that is my learning point. So we track that. So that's the thing. So you have failed in one exam. You have failed in one interview. You have failed in something that doesn't yourself. Bring yourself in wherever you fit. So it's up to you. It's path ahead there. And you will be successful. So. These are all what I had for you. And uh, now the great thing that whatever question I'm Now the house is uh, open for the questions. Students can uh, ask. Uh, students, you can. Uh, You can come up with your questions. Go ahead, I see you know, Andre, Ankit Kumar. Yeah, Ankit Kumar, you can uh, ask questions. You can shoot the questions to your elder brother. If you are talking, you are in mute. I cannot hear you. Okay. <laughs> I, I think I think your your juniors are not feeling comfortable, right? So make them comfortable. So tell them something about your campus life. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Campus life is all, was always fun, right? <laughs> and it was probably a different day at that, that time. I was just like you. I mean, not that much studious. That I, I, I used to be little backbencher. I mean, not uh, always like the most mostly backbencher. But yeah, I, I was in there. So yeah, then there was fun mostly in the hostel life. So just like you guys do. And uh, similar things like uh, almost those many uh, people are staying together <laughs> and yeah i mean it, 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 it was really fun and uh, i mean so far the study is concerned i really enjoyed that i mean that that is what uh, i will tell 
Okay, I have, I think I have one question. How to deal with anxiety with, that will basically define your answer. So what kind of anxiety in case of exam or in case of interview? So just. I'm seeing lots of hands raised up, but nobody's speaking anything. I think uh, I think Tejas has already written something in the chat box. Oh, during preparation on any exam or any exam, uh, hard to tell. But as I tell, I mean, don't freak out. So every exam has a particular skeleton, right? So if you are asking more and more only for BTEC, that that's I probably can't uh, demand something from you. It's a critical uh, thing or total MCQ or uh, whatever it is, 50% uh, MCQ, 50% theoretical, not like that. But uh, every exam focuses on a particular sector. So let me give you an example. So say, for example, those algorithms. But if it is more on a white paper, it will ask you more on the theoretical views. So again, whatever we just discussed, like uh, read but that exam can ask you. You probably cannot. But prepare yourself like that. So if it is tending to ask you more about those particular math, much more concrete than anything else. But if you are not seeing that the exam will be just like a little uh, lighthearted and uh, kind of theory, uh, th theory oriented, then I mean, you can still understand that particular uh, mathematical things more, but also focus on your theoretical things. So you first need to answer your question that how to deal your anxiety. So wherever your anxiety is, you need to de deal with it. If you are, your anxiety is, if you are, that is basically more pregnant and uh, intelligent you are, how uh, knowledgeable you are, uh, that exam is not the final uh, bottom line or final rock beat of that. So uh, try to practice more if it is if that exam has some sort of uh, time challenge that okay I have to complete 50 questions in only like 30 minutes. Yeah, that's a challenging. So try to come up with a strategy that will help you to answer those questions much more speedily. It depends on where you are more anxious about and based on that you need to move on but the second question what are the options and exam for electrical engineering okay what does that really mean options and exams for uh, means going further i guess so as we were discussing there are lots it just depends upon where you are trying to go so mostly in, uh, I mean, if you are just mostly asking about those exams, there are, the next step is obviously master's or integrated PhD, right? So in abroad in US universities uh, or even in Europe, uh, that is mostly the GRE and TOEFL uh, or in, yeah, m m mostly the GRE and TOEFL. So those are the two exams you will be uh, basically preparing for if you are trying to come in abroad. In India, I get it is still get right. Did you sir? I mean, get, get exam is still there for the uh, GRE and TOEFL. Uh, GRE was very much elaborative in uh, my era, but it has been much more scientific and logical nowadays. So it will not ask you to memorize like uh, thousands and thousands of word from dictionary, but it is much more. Again, in context of they just still need to understand the anatomy. For, for, for the exam because GRE exam is very much different from your semester exam. It is not technical at all. It is asking you so many generic things and mostly concentrated on the English or whatever the foreign language you choose, wherever you are trying to go. And uh, GRE and TOEFL also uh, fits for the integrated PhD course if you are just trying to uh, get your master's and doctoral both together. And it, it takes time, that course almost like five to six years, depending upon your thesis and all those stuff. But yeah, those are your options. <sighs> How to handle fear of getting failed? As I said, don't freak out. So uh, there, uh, how many failures uh, you have seen so far? I guess not that many, because you are still a bachelor student. 
whoever is in academia or in so many research in research field everybody fails every day so that is what the flavor of research is research is not like that that okay 1 plus 2 equal to 3 i know that equation i have to just implement there and fear there should not be any fear you need to take it very sportingly basically you should know that you can fail in in there but jot it down jot down those points which failed you for that exam i can <clears throat> give you a little bit uh, contextual example in in there and that is not related to any academic so i used to do quizzing in my uh, bachelor's life right and uh, i had very close friends who were were very much uh, enthusiastic about quizzing but he was from biotechnology another was from ec so we are mostly like uh, three or four people uh, joining together forming kind of a quiz uh, club or something like that we uh, performed like uh, we basically uh, represented uh, hit in two of the uh, major state level uh, quiz programs in kolkata we failed dramatically not in both the first failure of the first competition the, there was a, by the way the same quiz master in both and he used to ask much interested in there in the, the first everything we could not ask a single one and then there was another competition luckily he was the quiz master again or same regions so that is what we basically learned from our first mistake that okay i mean uh, those are the questions those are the tips to try to learn so i mean and prepare yourself in such a way that if you are asking the being asked the same question again you have to answer in a perfect way so we did not perfect but i mean we could not perfect uh, our ways we failed again in the second slot too in the in the second quiz contest but not on the same point we failed at the pre final stage semi final stage basically so we advanced and that is the learning i mean who can be even successful at the first shot i mean nobody is superhuman i guess if you are that is fantastic fair enough but nobody is uh, really nobody is that perfect so try to learn from there and then move on so there is no like a certain equation or certain ajo i mute yourself you are mute sorry 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 somehow i muted myself so, so sorry for that so another question from tejas how to maintain the same enthusiasm during the whole preparation mm, okay so that depends upon you i mean are you really enthusiastic in a particular topic or a particular subject and how much so as i said like uh, you probably cannot cover all the chapters in same details so you are much interested in chapter 1 and chapter 2 but not in chapter 5 and chapter 6 so it, it it's kind of a twisted question and with a twisted answer tejas so i mean that in the whole preparation if you are really interested you won't lose your enthusiasm and that is a total personal trait right so if you do not really uh, like dsp and you like machine design and advanced machine learning much more then you should lean towards that so your your enthusiasm is basically a function of your interest if you are really interested in that then i think the enthusiasm will stay now if you are asking about your preparation that depends right because that preparation time for that particular exam that is a factor of so many things you may be sick for two months in your whole six month semester journey the exam can be preponed uh, not postponed but preponed like uh, almost like uh, one month early so it's time to understand and read between lines in for chapter 1 and chapter 2 you didn't get time in chapter 5 and chapter 6 so there are so many factors so it, there is as i said i mean there is no hard and fast rule or no 
I mean, straightforward equation that, okay, I will be inputting that, I will gain my enthusiasm, and next time I'm a superhuman, so I will crack my exam. No, not exactly like that. So you have to manage yourself, but there are tricks. So you need to learn how much you will focus on that particular subject to read between lines. You, If you have enough time, go for that. If you are only focusing on your exam and only trying to successful for that particular exam, and it, if it is really doesn't matter to go in depth, then go for the exam way. So your preparation should be very much exam oriented only. So it depends, I get that, but I think you got my point. Okay, Abhishek Sahu, long here, the, I'm very happy to Okay, please tell about the US journey from here. Means after BTEC, what the steps to stereo climbed in time to time and what problem you faced during the fourth step, the struggle. Okay, so I will share my uh, MS journey with you and uh, how I shifted the questions. So let me read through that. Kaushik Pramani. First, I'm thanking you. Okay, okay, thank you. Advice us to improve our theoretical and practical skill in engineering and technology. So I have a philosophical question. Okay, my school life. IITN friend said to me, every mathematical problem has a solution. Is subjected to what condition or what structure we applied, then we can solve. Sir, your opinion. I did not get your question totally. So every mathematical problem has a solution, okay. Uh, should be, no, not, not a very true statement, but yeah, most of them has in modern world but i never think there would be a question because as far as my experience cannot say subjected what condition is structured to the applied yeah of course so i, I will come into that question a little later Kaushik. so that's kind of a yeah i mean a very much theoretical question they just again what your biggest failure and what was your way to handle that okay i have lots of failures uh, don't know which one is the biggest but i, I i'll be eventually go there hold on one second my screen somehow froze. Okay. Okay. I'm back here. Okay. So let's go one by one. So Avishek, uh, US journey and uh, all those stuff. And I think that will be uh, connected with the just question again, biggest failure and uh, whatever my failure stories. Okay. Failure stories so far. <laughs> I'm not 100% <laughs> successful, right? My journey is not uh, to be an end. So. I still do not know whether that is the biggest failure. I may be failure again after five years, and that might be my biggest failure. So I still still do not know. Okay. So MS journey after uh, completing my bachelor's, right? So I appeared for uh, GRE and 2FL because those are the pro forma, right? So you have to be in there, thing there. And there comes where you want to fit yourself because there are so many things emerged from electrical engineering. And in my slides, we were exactly, uh, my interest topic was mostly related to the signal processing and image processing. So th those kind of things. So you need to find out the relevant program where whatever you like and where you want to fit yourself. So let's say you are uh, very much interested in MEMS. You are very much interested in electrostatics or electromagnetics. So if electromagnetics, then you need to find uh, such a program in such a good university. No, not good. Okay, let, let's talk about the university a little bit later. First, talk about the program, right? So who is offering what? So probably there is a very advanced course or advanced courses in, in a particular uh, program uh, that will help you to know about electrical vehicles, right? Ele ele electric vehicles. DSP has several sub branches as well. So there may be uh, two or three different programs which are basically offering you uh, knowledge of pattern recognition, uh, data structure, data science, data modeling, blah, blah, blah. And also the neural networks and the basic DSP and all those stuff. So first select the program, then go for that particular university who is offering what. And there will be ranking. And Optimize yourself. That is the main bottom line. So not everybody is meant for Stanford. And frankly speaking, there are so many factors in there. It is Stanford and MIT is not only a factor of your intelligence. It is a factor of money too, because they do not offer scholarship uh, on a very easy basis, right? So you have to spend money. If you are ready to spend money for next two and three years or 
next five years, that is fantastic because don't expect like 100% scholarship from Stanford. They never offer that. So I'm, I'm just giving an, you an example for Stanford. It is there are so many good universities, but good versus average universities in US at least, that is how they differ. So if it is state driven universities, just like Texas State, for example, so that has like the federal fund. So there is very good chance of having a scholarship out of that. So if you are finding, if you can find a similar course where you can optimize yourself, wherever you are trying to go, yes. So that particular state university is offering you a very fantastic course then that would be, would be your best choice. But there are other choices too. So there may be a little less average university, but very much prominent for that particular program. So Okay, so uh, yeah, so first you need to uh, ask, I mean, choose that particular uh, program and then the university. So as I, I was saying, so maybe a little lower average university that can, less average university, but that is very much prominent uh, in that particular program. One university is ranked, say for example, 100, but it is an overall ranking. That does not mean that his its electrical engineering department has to be ranked 100. It may be less than 100, it may be greater than 100. So go for that particular program. Don't go for the overall university that, okay, my university is very much, uh, I mean, fab fabulous in uh, management studies. Okay, how does that matter for you? Really, really it doesn't, right? You are not in the management course. If you are, that's a separate, totally separate scripted story, but you are not. So select, such good program, the combination of that good program and the good universities, and it's totally up to you. And uh, then apply, go forward, and it, it's a selective process. It is, it is not a rat race in there. So, and there is a very big difference in Indian uh, masters exams and this GRE and TOEFL because in MTech exams in GATE or in anywhere, it, 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 it is mostly like a, a thing that would discard you from that, from that particular thing. So you have to reach a certain percentile and then you do not have any more choice. If you cannot reach there, so you are done for that particular year. So, okay, try again next year. GRE is not exactly like that. So there are lots and lots of options. So if you targeted a particular GRE score, so I don't know how much, uh, it is probably out of 450 or 500 nowadays, or maybe 600. In my time, it was like almost 1200. It was like a three and almost three and a half hours exam, which is very, very boring. But yeah, I mean, I scored around 850 or 875 ish, something like that. So up to 900, if you are in that, uh, segment like 750 to 900 in that block in that uh, fabulous you are not a superhuman because you have not scored more than 1000 or more than 900 but it will give you so many opportunities for that so that's a good thing with uh, GRE and uh, then you said the problem faced okay so so many problems were there so master's life in uh, US it's <laughs> not a bed of roses uh, know where it is but us is almost the same and uh, if you are more leaning towards research that will uh, basically take like uh, 16 to 17 hours uh, a day from you so research is not uh, easy and uh, if you are really uh, trying to go there i mean after uh, doing a, a masters and you stick to academia go for it but don't uh, expect that it, it, it will be very light that, okay, I mean, it, it is not a coursework. So coursework has a definite, you did better or did good in your exam and then boom, okay, I, I got an A, fine, fantastic. Research is not like that because you never know where it starts or where it ends. So where it starts, probably you know, but uh, you never know where, it, uh, where it, it, it will end. So every day you will find that challenges and if you are targeting or thinking like your thesis will be completing within just like that. So mine took almost like two years because where I wanted to reach, it took really 
longer time. And there are several factors in there. And that is much more uh, specialized for my particular field of study, what I was researching on. Your research might be different. So it might uh, be uh, completing a little early, but normally the research are not like that. So those hurdles are there. And then obviously the job market, right? So it is not like that rat race because the, I mean, uh, proportionately there are more jobs in US, but yeah, I mean, the, there are uh, fabulous candidates too. So you are basically competing with an U US university and targeting for a job, then your opponents are that stronger. So be aware of that and prepare yourself. So there are lots of hurdles you will always feel. I mean, I'll always be, uh, those hurdles will, will be always there in your path. So there are, and uh, I mean, uh, it never actually stops there. Now, after going to the uh, job field, going to the industry, if you are really assistant professor in some university or uh, somewhere after five, six years or 10 years, that's a separate story. Because that is a little smoother. Uh, your research challenges are heavy, not in exactly the curriculum, because you are, yeah, obviously you are shining day by day. You are uh, becoming a I mean, fluent teacher uh, day by day, but industry journey is again a different thing. So every day we'll feel those challenges and uh, there will be new undertakings and uh, new challenges almost in every project. So it depends, I mean, wh where you are. So, and uh, based on that, you need to uh, find yourself a way to overcome those but yeah i mean challenges are everywhere it is not smooth obviously but yeah i mean if you try you will be uh, successful so no issue in there okay so biggest failure okay okay Kar, actually we have to conclude now yeah sure uh, okay. yeah actually so uh, dr day if you if you can uh, take the ownership of concluding the session <laughs> Okay, thank you, Angika. I also, I also uh, uh, thanks to all the participants, those present. Okay, thank you, Angika. Later on, we will meet again. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Devdutta sir. Thank you, Anupam sir, and other those who are arranging this nice program. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Have a good night. Okay, dear students, you may kindly uh, leave the session so that we can conclude. We can stop.